Hey guys, welcome back. This is Drew Your Garage. I am Davis. Today we're going to be continuing on my 3800 build that is going into my 1986 Bureau GT right here. I did a little bit of work as you saw, got the SFI balancer on and behind the scenes I got the rest of the uh, you know, other side valve train done. Meaning we got the new ZZP 1.65 rockers on, we got the uh, their modified retainers which gives you a bit more clearance for larger camshafts. I have the Comp 136 pound valve springs, ZZP 7 inch push rods, and new LS7 lifters from GM. I'm still waiting on my Johnson lifters. Once I get the Johnson lifters, I'll be able to remove those lifter trays and just delete them because they are a point of failure. You, these are actually completely new or rather were manufactured, I don't know when, probably within the last 10 years, but never run. And you can see there's still the slightest bit of gap and I can lift it up, but much better than what the uh, old ones did. You can see how disgusting and old the old ones were, cracked and everything. Don't wanna run those. Don't wanna risk having a lifter spin in there. So in the meantime, just get it running, doing these lifters. If I get my Johnson lifters before then, I'll just swap them out. Then I'll have a spare set of LSM lifters. Here's a better look at the SFI balancer. So SFI spec and uh, this just went on as easy as uh, you know a normal one would. There's the old one. While I was in there, I replaced the uh, front main seal. Not that this one was bad, but while we're in there, might as well do it. I don't know if putting on the balancer, taking on and off, whatever will disturb it. So just add a new one. Next, what I'm gonna be tackling is the rear oiling. So again, this was the balance shaft that we had just cut off and RTV'd in. So I'm gonna remove it and make a permanent seal for the rear oiling hole that comes up here. We're deleting the balance shaft, of course. It is already deleted. I just wanna make the oil blocking more permanent. When you block the oil uh, from the balance shaft, it just provides more oils oil to the lifters. So overall makes that better. I'm also going to inspect this rear cover and possibly get a new one because the oil crossover for the lifters supposedly on the series three rear covers have a deeper channel so more oil can get to them. All right guys, I uh, just got the rear cover off. I know I could have just taken the motor off the stand, but uh, I didn't want to do that. And it took a little finagling, but I was able to get this off. So as you can see, we had just stock gasket on this thing. And uh, I guess there's a part number. So I'll just double check and determine if this is the correct part number for the series three, because that hole right there and that hole right there, oil passes through here for the lifters. And uh, you can see that amount of clearance. So I'm just gonna measure it with a caliper and then double check. But as the oil passes through here, it comes over here to the other lifter area, but then it has an area up here, travels up, and that is what goes to the balance shaft. So what I'm gonna end up doing is tapping this hole, the oiling hole, and then just putting in a stainless steel plug with some Teflon. First, before I go ahead and uh, tap that, I need to actually knock out the old balance shaft. So I cut it off there. I'm just going to uh, give it some taps back here and uh, we'll see if it'll pop out. All right, guys, as you can see, there is the oiling hole right in there. I had the uh, inner balance shaft and then the bearing that it would roll on. The bearing was still in place and uh, it was just a really tight fit. So I had to get a hammer and knock that out. It probably was providing a adequate oil seal, but uh, better that I just do this now. So what I'm going to do is just stuff a piece of paper towel down there and I'm going to come at it probably this way, send the tap in that direction and then I'll put the plug in. All right guys, I went ahead and tapped the hole a little bit off camera, but no worries. I got the plug right here and I'm gonna put some Mopar RTV on it just to make it doubly secure. All right, there it is. Kind of hard to focus, but I got the RTV on that. There we 
we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and get a wrench and tighten that. All right, there we go. So that is now plugged and should not leak. I'm not sure if I mentioned, but that was a 3 8 by 16 NPT. So it's a tapered thread, uh, meaning it'll make a seal. And then I added the extra RTV for more sealant. Normally I put pipe thread tape on something like this, but since it's going to be exposed to oil and high temperature, I just thought RTV would probably just be the simplest solution. It's unlikely that even without the sealant, oil would get through. So just adding some RTV to that uh, will help prevent any oil from getting through there and bleeding any oil pressure. I went ahead and removed the gasket so I could measure the oil channel there. And it turns out it's just about five millimeter or actually four and a half millimeter. And to my knowledge, the series three, the oil channel goes deeper than this and it provides, I think, I, this is just me off the top of my head. I'll put the actual spec on screen, uh, but I think it is eight millimeters. So it doubles how much oil could get through to the lifters. So that'll be a huge upgrade. I'm going to look into getting uh, a new rear cover that will be able to provide that. As you can see, it's a little bit of a ledge. So this oiling port right here, is six and a half millimeters so maybe that's the whole thing maybe it just goes down the full amount but as you can see in this one it goes down six and a half and then steps up to four and a half for the channel over so if we could just match the six and a half or even more that will provide just that little bit more oil pressure to your lifters. All right, guys, with that, I'm actually going to end it off for today. Uh, I didn't have tons of time, and I'd rather get you a video out than uh, postpone it and not have a video out. So uh, that will do it. But as you saw, I got the SFI balancer on there, so that will be able to handle the RPMs much better than a stalker would. Stalker would probably blow up, and I don't want that to happen. also got the ZZP rockers all done, basically the whole valve train mods minus the Johnson lifters, which they will be coming hopefully soon. I got the balance shaft deleted. I also just added just a layer of RTV over the top inside and out and I will just remove any excess for when I put the gasket on. I'm going to go ahead and do some research and get a series three gasket or series three rear cover. The one that has the deeper channel for the oil for the lifters. But basically next order of business is I will need to get the motor off of the engine stand and tap the crank for the new bolts. I got some ARP fasteners. That's actually for a Nissan SR20, but this is what you do. You just get, uh, I believe, well, I'll put the, the tap specs on screen. I think it's a 10 millimeter by 125 or something like that. But anyways, you uh, drill and tap crank bolt holes there because that is a point of failure when you're going higher power. You don't want to bust off your flywheel or flex plate. So I'm going to be drilling and tapping for these. Then we're going to be putting on the uh, correct oil pan, which I have over here, new windage tray and gasket as well as my oil return and I welded on. Again, guys, that will do it. Hopefully we'll be able to have this motor completed very shortly. Not, very, not a huge checklist of things that need to be done, just the, rear, the crank bolts and the oil pan. Then we'll be able to assemble this, finally get it back on the subframe. We'll basically lift the motor off, subframe, transmission will come out, and we'll be able to put this guy back on and put it back into the Fiero. I got some other stuff that hopefully that'll excite you guys. Got some ZZP fuel rails for Black Friday. So I was gonna try making my own, but decided to just end up doing this. The uh, rails that I had for the motor that I built, they did work. At least when I pressurized them, they were holding pressure with the uh, injectors on everything. Basically hooked up my air compressor and a tire gauge and uh, it was holding pressure. But in the end of the day, it wasn't a perfect product. It was a little jank, a little, jury, a little bit too jury rig. I don't know if that's possible, but it was a little bit too jury rig for me. So I decided just to go with the, uh, the you know proven option. Same with these rockers. I was trying to make, like I showed you in the last episode, the LS rocker work for a cheap alternative for the training upgrades it was just gonna require a lot of work and you could do it it was it was going to work but just a lot of a lot of work to make it happen with the pedestals welding spacers all that stuff so this wasn't too bad so I ended up just picking these up on Black Friday as well but guys I do thank you for watching I do thank all the new viewers who are here and enjoying the content I'm gonna try keeping it up all the posts and keeping it consistent for you guys because I know you want to see me get done with this project so uh, again thanks so much if you want to support the channel you can join us as a member down below subscribe like the video all that good stuff put the notification bell if you want to but uh we'll see you next time